Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. So I use Blackmagic Resolve 15.2. I wanted to compare my old GTX 1080 Ti to the RTX 2080 Ti. All right, so let's get right into it. The first test I'm gonna do is the thumbnail generation test. Uh, Premiere Pro, if I remember correctly, didn't generate thumbnails each time you zoomed in on the timeline like Resolve does. I believe it stored it. So here with Resolve, it actually uses the GPU to generate all these thumbnails quite quickly. And what I'm finding here is the 2080 Ti is 25% faster than my older 1080 Ti. Next up is the rendering test. I wanted to see if the uh, new card was a little bit faster and sure enough, it was only 5% faster than my 1080 Ti. All right, before we move on to the next test, I just want to introduce some of the footage I'm gonna be testing with. Uh, this is shot with the Mini Ursa Pro Blackmagic RAW 4.6K and these are graded. Uh, so let me show you one of these clips. Um, here is uh, after. And here's before, after, before, after. And so basically I've got some complicated nodes, especially like face refinement. Um, here's another one with uh, Blackmagic RAW 4.6K. And this is the new RAW, by the way. This is before and afters. Um, this one was shot with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera ProRes 4K, as well as this one. This one was also shot with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. This one is Cinema DNG. Um, and it's a lot harder to process. And this one was shot with the Red uh, Epic 5K. And I had to throw in some Sony XAVCS footage, of course. And of course, we have to have some GoPro H.265, which is always pretty hard on a lot of machines. Now, Resolve does not have a drop frame indicator like Premiere Pro does. So I'm gonna go and show all video frames. And I'm gonna go over into preferences and check stop playback when drop frame is detected. And this is done on a 4K timeline. And so I'm gonna hit play, and I'm gonna kinda of show you just briefly uh, what's happening when uh, I'm counting how many times it drops frames. So I'm just basically, it stops, and I hit the play again, and then it stops, and I hit play again. So I'm just doing this over and over again. And what I found was that 2080 Ti dropped 77% fewer frames than my old card, which is, which is pretty good. All right, before we move on, real quickly, you can hit pause if you want. These are the specs for my computer if you're interested. All right, next up, we're gonna do scrubbing footage with the mouse. Um, and as you can see, the ProRes files that we have here from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera are like butter. Now, what I am seeing on my monitor and you're seeing from the screen capture program might be a little different. The DNG is a bit uh, jerky. Uh, the 5K footage is a bit um, jerky. So basically what happened here on these tests is uh, a few of the files was a little bit better on the 2080 Ti, but there wasn't that much of a noticeable difference. Like this GoPro footage, I didn't know any difference in terms of smoother playback. But the only one I noticed was the RAW. This is the Blackmagic RAW, the new codec they have. That one was just a little bit smoother on the 2080 Ti. Um, but for the most part, there wasn't that much of a difference. Next up is our stabilization test, just to see if one graphic card works a little bit faster. And sure enough, the 2080 Ti was 25% faster than my older card. So what's different about the 2080 Ti to other cards before that is they have new cores uh, for ray tracing, and they are called tensor cores. And I read in the literature for Blackmagic that they're gonna be using them in the future. And when I asked, I emailed them, they came back with this generic statement about how Resolve is gonna be using it. And I didn't quite understand it, so I basically said, huh, what does that mean? And it basically just, the guy came back and said, it's gonna improve everyday experience as it relates to many aspects of Resolve's operation kind of thing. So it really still didn't answer my question. But I thought it was kind of interesting that in the future, these RTX cards will actually get better within Resolve um, which I don't think something uh, Adobe will be working on with Premiere Pro. I could be wrong on that, but I think it's kind of cool that they're already stated that they're going to be using these new tensor cores. Now I own Resolve Studio, which can support two GPU cards. Uh, with NVIDIA's NVLink, you can basically double your RAM from 11 gig to 22 gig of VRAM um, when you tie them together. At least that's what some people in the forum have been talking about. And then I've seen other people in the forum say, no, you can't do that. And so 
I emailed uh, tech support at Black Magic, and they basically came back with a watered down answer like, well, we really haven't tested it yet either. Um, so I don't really know the answer, and I apologize when I got the card from B&H to review. I should have asked for two, although I, I'm not sure if I would have gotten two because um, they've been back ordered for so long. So the 20Ti card that I'm using is actually not from NVIDIA. It's made by EVGA, and after I saw this uh, picture taken a couple weeks ago, uh, one burnt basically, or smoke was coming out of his case. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Um, but it was with the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti. And uh, after I saw that, I was like, eh, maybe I won't get EVGA. Uh, <laughs> so basically, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna buy uh, the new RTX 2080 Ti or just keep my old one? I think ultimately what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and wait. Um, a couple of reasons. One, definitely being price, because these new cards are really expensive. They're not coming in at 1080 Ti prices when they first came out. I was able to get that card for, I think, $700 right from NVIDIA when it first came out. But these cards are ridiculous expensive. Now, I know I've been showing some difficult RAW, uh, Blackmagic RAW, Red RAW footage, uh, things that are heavily color graded. Um, normally, I sh edit in 1080. Um, where I don't have any drop frames. Um, I've been showing you all the results based off a 4K timeline. What you can do, similar to me with a 1080 Ti, do everything on a 1080 timeline, and when you're ready to export or re you know, render, you just go to a 4K timeline and it works quite well. So for me, I think I'm gonna stick with the 1080 Ti for a little bit longer, maybe another year. Watch, hopefully the prices will drop and maybe Blackmagic will uh, code up some more changes to use that uh, new Tensor Cores. That's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.